Hi everyone, this is JD, your gadget review friend. Every now and then we will encounter phones who tries to do something different to stand out. LG tried doing this on their modular LG G5 and the dual screen jet looking LG Wing but failed. And just a sad news that LG is quitting the smartphone business and will start focusing on other things. But there are some companies that are doing these things successfully, standing out in the crowd of mobile devices. They might not have the biggest brand followers, but they will have the most loyal fan base for their products. Sony is known to produce great camera sensors and awesome mirrorless cameras for quite some time now. And today, we're looking at their take on a professional camera first, then phone. We're reviewing the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II, a professional camera with phone functionality. Is it a photographer's phone? Hey, don't forget to subscribe, my friend. Let's go! Let's start with the design. There were four color options available for this phone and those were black, gray, blue, and pink. We have the black color and I think this is the most professional looking of the bunch. It has a large screen but is narrower compared to other phones and that makes it easier to handle in one hand. It has the camera shutter, Google Assistant, a volume and power button with fingerprint sensor on one side, microphone and 3.5 jack on top, SIM card tray on the other side, and charging port microphone at the bottom. The earpiece on top also acts as the loudspeaker. Both front and back glass are protected by Gorilla Glass 6, and the side is aluminum frame. It has that pill-shaped camera module at the back that looks outdated but somehow looks really good. I don't know, it looks bigger and classic. I like it. Huawei has the Leica branding, OnePlus has the Hasselblad, and Sony got size. Nice. All in all, it's a classic Sony look, a premium, well thought of, and not your typical phone design. Hey, just a side note, if you own Sony Xperia 5 Mark II, we're making more videos about this phone in the future. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. We're uploading daily. Next is performance. Unlike Samsung that somehow low-key cheating by using two types of processors, this phone is only using one processor and that is the Snapdragon 865 5G. It is also coupled with 8 gigs of RAM and if I will describe my experience with this phone, it is as fast as any flagship phone you will get today. Sure, there's Snapdragon 888 now, but Gadget Revna's no BS review, it feels the same. I can play heavy gamings like Mobile Legends, Call of Duty, and GTA with high to ultra settings and light gaming such as Subway Surfer and Temple Run are blazing fast. I have no issue opening apps, streaming services, and using it for phone calls, text, and camera use. It has a generous 128 to 256 gigs of storage that is perfect for 4K video recording and is expandable through micro SD card up to 1 terabyte. It also has the fast UFS 3.0 storage for faster read and write. Do you need a lot of storage? This phone can give you that. Another function of this phone is you can connect to a Sony mirrorless camera to become a screen monitor. You have to buy the cable adapter from Sony. Imagine an ultra-wide full HD monitor connected to your camera. So in terms of performance, this is a max out phone that integrates itself on Sony Alpha ecosystem. Next is the screen. The screen is a tall and narrow 6.1 inch OLED screen with 120Hz refresh rate. The colors are punchy, saturated and has deep blacks. You don't have screen bleeding on the side and it's just a joy to watch ultra wide anamorphic format videos and play games on this phone. The screen is super responsive to touches and you will enjoy this phone in gaming and watching movies. It has a tall 20 by 9 aspect ratio and the aspect ratio is good for reading, multi-window and full screen videos. It also has 606 nits of max brightness that is good for outdoors. You will see everything on the screen in direct sunlight. All in all, the screen of this phone is fast, functional and great in one hand use. Next is the sound. Sony made two things right and then added another perk. We were given a loud front-facing stereo speakers that also acts as the earpiece and then the 3.5 jack on top. They also added a dynamic vibration system so the phone vibrates when you're playing music or just anything. 
It makes the experience more immersive. I tested this phone with my Pixel 3 XL and here's the test. The sound is rich, full, and has deep bass. You will love it. Next up is the battery. The battery life of this phone is solid. It has 4000 mAh that will last you all day of use. I was able to play 2 hours of solid gaming, 1 Netflix movie, 2 hours of music, another hour for social media, and occasional use for calls, texts, and camera use, and still have more than 20% at the end of the day. The battery can easily last you 2 days of moderate usage. With the included 18 watts charger, I was able to charge the phone from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes. Sadly, it doesn't support wireless charging. And for our last review, the camera. It's like the iPhone 12's triple 12 megapixel Perfecta. It consists of 12 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 12 megapixel telephoto. It's a consistent 12 megapixel across all sensors and all three are useful too. I hope every phone manufacturers learn from Apple and Sony instead of putting macro lenses and time of flight sensors. The photos are great, neutral toned and sharp. Auto mode isn't the most exciting as it will produce a so-so image. I will do more side-by-side -side camera comparison videos of this phone and other flagship phones so please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of it. And I would also like to apologize as I will do all the testings in auto mode. In pro mode, it's a different story. If you own a Sony mirrorless camera before, pro camera is familiar. It gives you control of everything from exposure to aperture. Cinema Pro is also here and this gives you flexibility on applying your LUTs later as you can set your videos to flat. You can adjust color grading later. It can shoot 4K up to 60 and 120 FPS. Videos are great! So what is Gadget Rev now's verdict? Sony created a flagship phone in Xperia 5 Mark II. There's no question with everything they put into the phone. Now that it's out of the question, Sony gave us more of what they can offer. A great screen, a different form factor, and a full manual control over the camera. Unlike other reviewers that's criticizing this phone and asking Sony to compete with the mainstream, I feel different. I like the look and identity of the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II. It is well thought of, promising, and just a different breed. It might not be for everyone especially for those who doesn't know how to manually control the camera, but there's a very specific group of people Sony is targeting and those are photographers. And photographers that use Sony mirrorless cameras. With a camera function similar to a Sony mirrorless and the integration of the phone to these Sony cameras, it feels like Sony is inviting the Sony Alpha fanboys to patronize even the phone like what we did to their mirrorless cameras. If you can spend $1,000 for cameras, maybe you can also spend the same amount to this phone. At the end of the day, this phone is offering us an experience. The fulfillment of photography is not the result but the process of making it and that's the manual control. And Sony is offering us that experience. Sony Xperia 5 Mark II is no doubt a photographer's dream phone. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. We're posting daily videos of gadget reviews, comparisons, photography, and tips. The goal of this channel is to review and compare devices as simple as possible, concise, and friendly, and keeping you updated with the latest happenings around the tech world. Don't forget to drop your comment, like, and share. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.